Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. How many of you know that God is good? No, but all the time. That means in our bad time, he's good. But isn't it so hard to believe that he's good when we're going through something hard? It's, I think it's very rare for us to say, you know, he is good when we're going through ugly times. But I believe that tonight you're going to uh, be, uh, God wants to impart in your heart a word from heaven. I believe that many of you have many questions, are sitting here with many questions, many doubts, and I believe that God will speak to you tonight. I also believe that God is going to heal so many of you. I cannot say all of you. Can he do it? Yes. But it's to the whosoever is willing to believe that he's able to do it tonight. He told me, I want to heal hearts. He told me, I want to see my people prosper. I want to see my children be the light in this time. But in order to do that, we need to fully, fully understand how good God is. And many times it's so hard to comprehend his goodness because we have so many, uh, in our own love for people, we have so many um, conditions, right? Uh, I want to start by prayer. Uh, so Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you that you are here. We thank you for your presence, your power that is ready to heal, to deliver, to sanctify. I thank you, Father God. I thank you that tonight, you are answering prayer. I thank you that tonight some of you will, will taste the goodness of our God. That tonight many of you will taste a miracle that you have been believing God for. That tonight you will see with the eyes of hope. So I pray, Father God, that you will put our minds, help us to put our minds fixed upon you. To set our hearts fixed upon you. To see our gaze fix upon you, and that we do not wave to the side or to the left. We will not waver, Father God, but we will stand strong, believing that you are who you said you are, and we are who you said we are. So we declare that in Jesus' name, amen. So how many were here Sunday? Oh, okay, most of you. If you were not here Sunday, my husband uh, was preaching on Better Together, and I know he brought the bomb tree, right? You saw it? It was huge, and I was like, dang, because I was you know, I was going to use a tree too. So I'm like, the best thing I can do is get this plant. So just enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's for your, it's just for your view. I said, he got a plant. I need to bring some plants. And I got a real one. I got a fake one. And I even got a pot. Uh, I wasn't here Sunday, but I did watch the, you know, his message online. And the reason I wasn't here on, on Sunday, and this, you haven't seen me, is like, we are moving. We actually already moved to a new place. And who knows that you, when you're moving, that's the perfect timing to refine yourself in Jesus. <laughs> like, it is like the opportunity to, like, grow in patience, in kindness, in forgiveness. I was like, God, you have had me in this process of moving. I think I'm done. The pruning is over. Because it's, it's horrible. I don't wish it to anyone. I, I, you know, but I'm praying that one day, if I move to my new house, that I'm going to have movers. I'm just going to say, pack that, pack that. This goes over there. It, it, wouldn't it be nice? Women, believe with me. <laughs> We're the ones who end up packing anyways, right? So I'm like, this is your time to say, yes. Come on. So anyways, uh, so as I was, uh, you know, moving and People always give you a timeline because they were working, they're working still in their house and they give you a timeline. This is the timeline, which when I heard the timeline, it was pretty miraculous. I was like, are you sure? Two days, three days of a miracle working power? They're like, oh, yes. And so it, we are already on day, I think, eight. And then, but we have the best people doing the work. We really have the best people doing the work. What happened? is that one of the people, uh, the ones laying the floor, uh, his partner just left. And I thought, you know, no matter how awesome and how wonderful and how talented you are and how gifted you are in your craft, if you can't, if you, uh, you cannot do it alone. Because then the time is going to be longer. 
And so as I was even just uh, looking at all this with the joy of the Lord, right? I sat there and I thought, you know, many times we, wanna, we want our lives to be transformed. We want transformation. Who, who doesn't want transformation? Who doesn't want change? I do. I do. But many times we do it alone. If we do it alone, we don't think we need people. And I'm going to tell you, since the creation, since the foundation of the world, if you go through Genesis, read all Genesis, God created us just, you know, not just to worship him, but God created us to fellowship, to, for relationship you were designed. That's what Adam and Eve just did walk in this amazing relationship. They, they, they walk in the afternoons with God. Think about it. You go for a hike and God will be walking with them. I mean, and, and we read it like, oh, it's nice. But the moment they sinned, that's the moment that separation came in, the sin came in, and they came, the Satan came to separate us. That means that, you know what, we're not good together. We don't feel good together. And as I've been doing church uh, and being the church for more than 21 years, I realized that there are so many people in the body of Christ that are the most isolated people on the planet. And I'm not saying because they don't go to church. What I'm saying is that they don't get into a relationship with Jesus or they don't get into a relationship with others because getting, being together, that, that's a mindset. Really better together is a mindset. For many years, I believe, you know, I don't need people. Have you ever felt that? You know, I'm good alone. I, I'm a, a happy lone ranger. And many of us have that. That's my personality. It's, you know, I, I do great things alone. I work better alone. I but you know that that's a deception of the enemy? You could, you, could be, you could probably do better, but you can do your best with others. Can you be effective? Yes, but not as effective as God wants us to be. And so I really believe, I want you to go with me to, um, I want you to actually go to John 17, 20, because Jesus always talks about re relationship. And the gospel itself is not just about good news. So what's the good news about the, of the gospel? The good news is that he has re relationship and restoration. There is no way that can be restoration, reconciliation. He says that he has given us a ministry of reconciliation. We cannot reconcile with the other person or bring reconciliation to other people because it takes two people to reconcile. Did you know that? That's why reconciliation is really hard. Forgiveness, that's what God says. You know what? You need to forgive because that's, that's upon your decision. I don't have to wait for so-and-so to want to forgive me. I can ask God for forgiveness for myself and forgive me for hurting this person. And God says, you know what, I forgive you. But if it's going to reconcile, I want to reconcile with, with this person, then I need their agreement. So God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That means you're not doing it alone. You cannot be the church alone. Like my husband always says, and I love his saying, the banana who leaves the bunch gets eaten. Isn't it true? I was going to bring bananas, but I'm like, no, maybe it's not a good, you know. But, but it's the truth. And I believe that we're living in times when we are so afraid to commit. We're afraid to commit. What am I saying? Afraid to commit to God, to his body. You and I were meant to do life together. The church, our church, is an opportunity to grow and, and learn from one another. The opportunity that you and I have is to plant ourselves in the house of the Lord. I've been planted only in two houses when God did the transplanting for me. He had to like almost uproot me. He had to do it himself to put me here. And I'm not saying that just because people move. I'm saying I understand when people move and it's, the move is longer. But ma the majority of people, when it comes to church, they leave and they transplant themselves. Themselves. Not because God told them. It had to do with, with the, uh, some kind of relationship issue. Think about it. And we call it God told me. Right? Isn't it good to pull out the card? We as Christians, we have the, you know, get out of jail free. And you, you pull out your car and you're like, God told me I need to marry that guy over there. He told, oh, yes. I was fasting and praying and I saw him and when I knew he was coming in, he is the one. God told you, huh? Two years later, God did not tell me. <laughs> God, you lied to me. No, you told yourself. 
In 21 years, I have seen many marriages that came to me before, and they, someone said, God told me. God told me that she is my wife. I was like, but has she, does she know that? <laughs> because I don't think she knows. And this is a true story. I don't think she knows that. Oh, no, no. God, show it to me. And they were baby Christians. This is a true story. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give out names. They're very happily married with other people. Thank you, Jesus, right? But this girl was very new in the church. So, you know, she's a baby, right? And she wants to please God. And then comes this guy and says, you know, I've been in fasting and prayer for years, and I know that you are my wife. She said, she came to me, and she was crying. And she said, Pastor, I don't want to be out of the will of God. And I said, well, do you like him? She's like, no. And I said, then why are we having this meeting? Right? What? I, what? Because she says, because I don't want to be out of the will of God. And God already told her I'm his wife. And now, do, should I fast and pray? I said, no, you run from him. <laughs> like, why do we complicate it, right? Like, no, run, forest. And you know that I sat there, like, I had like five sessions with her. Because she was so afraid to miss the will of God. Just because some nutcase, Right? There's a lot of seeds in the, in the body of Christ. It's a nutcase, right? You have to plant yourself in order to evolve into a tree. But because they never plant themselves, it's just the nutcases going around and doing their nutty things, right? I mean, it's just this is the gospel, people. It's just uh, this is my version. <laughs> you want to hear more, you know, uh, what would I say, more uh, eloquent speaking? Come on Sundays and hear my husband. But I'm just going to tell it how I live it. You know, because the gospel is to, the word is you're supposed to live it. But I'm like, all this crazy. And that's what people, I remember that she was so traumatized after that. Like, and I said, you know, no. I even had to sit there and be a mediator to this person. No, but God told me, I said, brother, it's not happening. It's not happening because you're going against her will. God will never, he doesn't even twist her arms for, him, for us to obey him. So why would he tell you and not tell her? God doesn't gossip. He doesn't. He does not. God will come to you first, and then, you know, if that happens, it's like, you know what? Yeah, we like each other. Okay, then awesome. Get married. She's the one. He's the one. And he better or she better be the one, and you stick with that one. Right? I'm just saying this because this message is a little bit uh, heavy, so I want you to a little bit of laughter always does good, right? John 17, 20 to 23. Go with me. This is Jesus talking about relationship. And he says, I do not pray for this alone. And this is where he speaks to them, right? His disciples. But also for those who will believe in me. Do you know that he was praying 2,000 years ago? As I was reading this, I thought, Jesus, you were praying for me. He was praying for you because I says, I'm praying for those who will believe. And you are those that have come to believe Jesus. And he says, believe in me through their word. That they all may be one. Are we supposed to be two? No, let's not be afraid. Let's say one. Right? Okay, we're afraid to say one. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. That they also may be one in what? Right. Who's us? Father, the Son. Fa I mean, God, the Father. Father, the Son. Got the son, and I'm still confusing myself, and the Holy Ghost, right? <laughs> the Father word, the Father word. Okay. Three. He says, us. When Jesus, when God created us, he says, let us make men in our likeness. What likeness? Likeness is like we're going to do things together. The Father is the one who, when, when Adam and, and uh, Eve sinned, the father said, you know what? I have a plan. I have a plan of redemption for them. And then the son said, okay, they need, okay, the father has the plan. The son will execute it. And then the Holy Spirit will stay here with us so we can continue to reconcile people to the father. Right? But have this in mind. We cannot reconcile people if we don't know how to love God and we don't know how to love ourselves and we don't know how to love each other. Okay, so let's continue. What verse am I? You guys are not even with me. 
to many, 21, 22, okay, then I'm going to go back to 21. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. That they also may be one in us. Here the one, in, in, one, oh, okay, highlight it with your crayon. That the world may be believed that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me have given them. Which glory is to do things together, to abide, to remain together. In them, you and me, that they be made, be made what, perfect in what? In one, right? And that the world may know that you have sent me and you have loved them as you have loved me. So there is no way. There's people that don't want to be in church because I, the other day, as I was, you know, buying things because I couldn't even find a towel, I said, I need to go buy me a towel. Uh, because I spent 30 minutes opening boxes and I couldn't find my towel. So I'm like, oh, you know what? This is the time to be oh, smart. Because I pray, Lord, reveal where the box is. You know, it doesn't work that way. You don't know who, where they put it. So I just, yeah, I'm just going to go buy a towel. So I went to Burlington Gum Factory. And then I was wearing my T-shirt, actually, that I got from CJ. And it says uh, Psalms 23, right? And then the person who was helping me says, oh, is that, do you mean Psalms 23? And I said, yes, you know it. And he's like, no, yeah, I do. He's like, right now. And I said, so uh, do you know Jesus Christ? And I was like, do you know Jesus Christ? Because good thing I wasn't like, I was frustrated before I got there, right? And then I fixed my face before I got off the car. You know how you, you have to like, right? So I was like, I have to believe it. I have to drive 10 minutes to get a towel, right? So I was like, it's okay because I'm being refined. I'm being refined. I'm being pruned. So as I got out, like I had my smile. and I was like, yeah. So I'm talking to the guy. And then he says, he says, you know, I... And I said, how come you don't go to church? He said, I grew up in church. He said, I, I went to uh, church with my grandparents, with my parents. They're all Christians. I went to a, uh, a Christian school. And I said, so what happened? And he says, you know what happened? He says, Christians are the most uh, fake people I know, the most hypocritical people I know. I said, oh, brother. And, I, and it was a brother, right? So brother, I said, can I, and I said, can I call you brother, you know? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> well, we're having a conversation, right? So I'm like, brother. He was a young man, so I felt like it was, you know, my brother, right? So I said, brother. I don't know why I said brother. You know, it's when the, lo the Lord leads you, you, you look like an idiot. And you have to be willing to, you know, say things that sometimes you don't want to say. But I was like, so, brother, I said, I, I wish I can deny that. But I said, you know, I'm going to agree with you. And he was like, really? He's like, what church do you go to? And I told them our church, I said, you know what I'm going to agree with you? Because I said, it's not about Christianity, it's a title. And I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Religion doesn't save you, but Jesus saves you. It's a relationship. And I said, you cannot fix your eyes on what people have done to you. It's like, you don't understand what they have done to me. No, believe me, brother, in Christ, right? No, believe me, I said, I do understand. And, and he says, okay, what do you guys do at your church? So I Went to the whole still, like, but everything that we do here, right? And so I'm believing that he will be here Sunday. So if you see me with the brother, I'll say, this is my brother. He's my brother. Because it's like, you have to come. You have to come. And I said, we're not religious people. But like, look at me. I'm calling you brother. I'm, he says, what do you do at the church? I serve. <laughs> so, you know, just in case, I, you know, when he sees me, I'm like, my God, was that the pastor? But I was able to invite him, right? But why is keeping him away? from being in the church. It's because we, know, we don't know how to be together. There's a saying in Spanish, but I don't know if I can translate it well. It's juntos pero no revueltos. Who will translate that for me really quickly? There you go. Good one, like a scramble egg, right? It's like, yeah, you're there, we gather. We're gathered together, but we're not together. We worship in a place, but we're not together worshiping, right? We come to Bible study, but we only just gather. It's not a gathering. It's a togethering. It's a my own word. <laughs> I'm very creative like that. That's why you have to come Wednesday. You learn new words. <laughs> it's a together. See, the together is a different than being just coming and gathered together. We're going to have a fellowship. I'm tired of fellowshipping. You know what I do in fellowshipping? I just eat. And then I just regret that I ate so much because everybody just brought so much food and I cannot stop myself. And, and then after that, I am like, oh, my gosh, that was really, that was a big gathering. 
of food, but I didn't get to know a person. Are you vulnerable? Do they know what you're going through? I'm not saying like, oh my God, tell the whole church, but, but we need relationships. I know that I wouldn't be here in this season in my life if I wouldn't have some key people in this church for me. If they were not in my life, I think I would already checked out because doing life and being the church is not easy. It's painful. Growing, it's painful, and we need to grow together, together. You know, the devil can mimic a lot of things. The music is so popular. Why? Because he was the, the praise and worship leader in heaven. Do you understand that? He was leading worship, and so he knows worship. Okay, but then he stopped. He wanted to be worshipped, right? He wanted to take the, the place of God. And then he took, you know that God is so awesome. And, I, and I, I was asking God, why is it that you didn't just strip him off of all of his, you know, his giftings? Because he cast them out of heaven, right, into hell. Because God did not create hell for you and I. It was for him. And he's doing his work trying to get people to join him. And we need to do our job trying to get people to join heaven, right? But he has so much influence. Like, I'm like, why can we become, why can we create the best beats as followers of Jesus Christ, right? I always like, Missy Elliott is my girl. Please forgive me. If, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. I mean, that woman is creative. And I'm like, if she will come to the Lord, why is she like so gifted? Why? I'm like. That woman can rock it. I used to I used to sing this song on a Wednesday night, but just a little piece, right? But because I just I just hear beats. I don't even listen to like the words. I don't care. Like I should care, but I didn't. Okay, so don't tell me, Pastor. I didn't. So now I do. Okay, so forgive me for those Wednesdays that you heard me. What was the song that I used to sing, Alexis? Is it is it? Oh. Can you work it? Or something like that, right? <laughs> but I was talking about the word of God that we need to work, work the word, right? But I was, is it, you know? And so, but anyways, just to say, just to say that I was like, okay, so he has so much influence in the industry, right? But you know what he cannot mimic? He cannot mimic love because it's not in his nature. He is not. He is not. He is incapable. He cannot. He will not be able to mimic the love of God. He will not be able to mimic the love that I have for you and I. He cannot mimic that because it's not in his nature. He says, I pray not only for the ones. Jesus, I pray for all of you guys here 2,000 years ago. He says, but I'm praying for the church that is coming in 2018. And I'm praying that because they are together and they love each other so much, and they love the Father, they will know, they will see that Jesus is real because of the love that they have for one another. Can you imagine if we start winning people just look like, dang, those people like love each other. When I talk about love, it's not like, I love, you know, we take love, I love pizza, right? I love chocolate. I'm not talking about that love. I'm talking the love that costs you something. When it's, when it's not comfortable, you're willing to love. When it's not convenient, you're willing to love. When it's painful, you're willing to love. When somebody done you wrong, you're willing to love. Okay, that is the love that I'm talking about. Because the enemy cannot, he cannot accuse you. There is nothing. I was telling the guy that, that, I, was, that I was ministering, I said, you know, I said, because he said, I have a question, but if, it, if Jesus, if God uh, wrote the Bible, I know it was inspired by, by God, but men wrote it. And I said, yeah, but it was inspired by God because no one in the right mind will tell you to forgive seven times seven. Or 70 times seven, right? Who would say that? Not me. I would say, do forgive one. One a day is good for me. Tomorrow will be a new, a new day, and let's go with tomorrow, right? I'm like, it, it, what right mind somebody will be inspired to write forgive? In what mind someone fleshly and worldly will write and will be inspired to write that we have to pray for our enemies? Who says that? I said, only Jesus would say that. Only God, and that's how I know the word of God is real. And he says, you know what, I'm, 
I didn't think about that. I said, well, brother, no, I'm just kidding, uh, you know, but I got him thinking. I'm like, he's like, well, you know, forgiving is easy. I said, maybe, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's easy. It's, it's painful to forgive when you have been done wrong. It's painful. It's simple because the Bible says just forgive. Simple commandment, forgive, and it should be forgiven, right? I was like, oh, piece of cake. Unless so, and, and, until someone does something to you. Then you're like, oh, now I have to chew the pill? That's different. And I said, when you get to live the word, then you realize, you know, only he is able. And I give him my testimony in 30 seconds. I said, only he was able to restore me. Only he was able to love me when I didn't even love myself. Only he was able to see me when I even couldn't see myself. He, and he's like, how? Through people. Through people. Because when I couldn't believe who I was in Christ, people came and constantly told me, sister, that's what they call me, right? Sister. There's so much potential in you. And I would be like, there's nothing. You're gifted. Ga -da 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 -da. And they would say all these things. And I couldn't believe and I couldn't believe it until one day it manifested. And I believed it because they said it. And they said it. And I was planted in a house. And they constantly were telling me who I wasn't feeling like who I was. But they were calling me out. Uh, God saw me. So it matters who you do your life. Who's your crew? Who's running with you? Who do you go to when you have a problem? Do you run to people that would, that would lead you to Jesus, or do you run with people who, that are going to agree with you? And they're going to agree with you with your pain. They're going to agree with you. What I notice, uh, this is all over the world in, in the church, that when people leave uh, churches, then they gather together. The people that are hurt, they gather together because it's comfortable. Let's talk about the pain, right? They did me wrong. Well, yeah, they did you wrong. We're not going to negate that fact. But you as a brother and a sister in Christ, you need, to, uh, uh, you need to stand and you need to believe that. That's not the way I respond because I need to, people need to see Jesus in me. So I cannot, even if they're believers and they're talking about how someone hurt them, how someone, someone did this to them, you're supposed to say, but you, we as, as children of God, we, are, we have to forgive them. And forgiveness is a choice. We think it's a feeling, an emotion. It's not. So every day you said, well, I thought yesterday I forgave so-and-so. And then you see them the next day and you start twisting, you know. Have you ever, that's ever happened to you? Like, dang, I, I took that person to the altar. And I know I didn't pick him or her up. So what am I feeling? That's just the feeling. You need to separate the facts from the feelings. No, the fact is that I forgave them that day. All my feelings are just acting out, but it's okay because I already made a choice. And that's when I'm, I forgave them. And if we would do that, we would be more healthy. I love how the word always compares us, you know, with trees or plants, right? Let me give, because of time, let me give you Psalms 92, 13. It said, those who are planted in the house of the Lord should flourish in the courts of our God. You know that flourish means to prosper. We need to be planted. We need each other. Psalms 1-3 one, three, uh, one, three says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also should not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So let me talk about my trees that I have here. When I have a little biology, I always wanted to teach biology. So God said, teach biology tonight. So I was like, okay, we'll do that. So you see my plant here? Isn't it beautiful? So let me tell you about the plant. I wrote it down because I wrote the steps. The plant needs to be connected to something, right? The plant cannot be planted outside itself. The stem, the stem is connected to the, to the root. The root that are buried in the soil, and the soil draws moisture and nutrients into the stem, right? The stem is also connected to the branches, and the branches are connected to the leaves, in the leaves, the, her, this job, I was going to call her her, right? But the leaves, the job for them is to catch the sunlight, and they turn the sunlight, they absorb the sunlight, and they turn it into energy. 
and it goes all way all the all back to the root again. So, but we want to do this, and I'm like, no, forgive me. But you know, I was like, you know what? Being with this other two, it's, it's, we're too close. I don't want this. It's okay. I want to plant myself, but I, I don't. I, I I don't like. I don't do well with people. You know, they ask me too many questions. They want to know what's my five-year goal. They want to know what God's speaking to me. They don't leave me alone. You know, I, I don't like it. I'm just going to stay home. I'm going to stay home. And so you're just struggling because you being together, this is too messy. I'm struggling. You know what? No, I want to do it by myself. You know, the pastor doesn't even preach. And the pastor, she has a big... She has a big uh, accent. I sometimes don't even understand her. <laughs> I have to take a translator when she's talking. You know, you know, I'm like, no. And then the leadership, you know what? They don't even know nothing. And then the greeter, my gosh, he almost wants to strangle me when I come in. <laughs> it's too much. And then they always want me to go greet. They're always asking me to serve. No, no, I. I I, that's not what I want. I, I just want I just want intimacy with God. You see the struggle here, right? And I'm really struggling, like, no. And then, like, what? They call me to the office. I don't know what they want to tell me now. What? They want to change my position now that I'm finally serving? What the heck? Oh, and then, and then Pastor Virginia sometimes doesn't even talk to me. No, you know what? No, I'm done. I don't like it. It's too messy. I'm just going to go here. I'm not here because I'm going to listen to the word online. Okay. I'm going to listen to the word online. You know what? I can pray for the sisters in the church. And then you surround yourself with fake people because you have all these friends on Facebook, right? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you're like preaching on Facebook and Instagram and whatever. And you're like, you feel great about it, you know, like, sisters, God, you know, you, you're like, you're also religious, right? So you, you feel great. You feel great. Look at this. Hey, they're not your friends. And then you said, you know what? That's too much. I'm going to fast from, I'm going to fast from Facebook. God is calling me to a fast. I was like, God will call you to a fast here. Because there is no way, no matter how much I pray and fast, that I'm going to grow without a soil. There is no way. There is no way. There is, you will go against the law, okay, of, of everything that God created is connected to something. But we want to do it alone. And then you said, no, you know what? As a matter of fact, no, even, even my Facebook friends, forget them. Because now they're getting on me. You know what? Adios. And then you go like, you know what, no, I'm just going to hide myself. I'm going to be fasting and praying for a, quite a while. You know what? And you go into your house and you isolate yourself, but every day you're like, in Jesus' name, thank you that I'm growing. Father, I sense your presence. What the heck? You're sensing nothing. You're doing it alone. You're not growing. You are so deceived thinking that you're doing it together with God. You cannot be with God if you are not with others. But this is what we do. Believe me. Believe me. There were times that I wanted to dip from here, and I was struggling myself. And I said, I told my husband one time, we need to go to a different church. And praise God for a sound mind, right? That's why you need each other. It's like, oh, no, we're not moving. And then I was like this, but I wanted to be like this. Okay, but don't let them talk to me. You know what? I'm hurt still. Like, okay, fine. But because of these two, getting nutrients in my roots, if you pull them, they all connect. That's why I couldn't pull myself out, put this plant out, because they're all connected. All the roots are intertwined. But because these ones are getting all the nutrients, the sunlight, and the transformation, I was, I was receiving from them. I, and, and believe me, I was this person at church for many years. And then I decided to, okay, fine, I'm going to come out of hiding. 
right? And I had a few leaves. I, I, I try to plant it. I'm not a, I'm not a garden person, gardening person. So Alexis and I, we promised to do a garden. We still haven't done it. This is the best we're going to do, girl. <laughs> we could take that home. But do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get the picture? So God wants you to have or make a choice. And you need to risk it all. Because when we're this close together, you think it's going to be easy? You think there's not going to be problems? You, th you think there's not going to be conflict? That's why we're there. So I can learn how to live in the body of Christ, I can learn how to be one with God. I can learn how to be, be one with my brothers and sisters. And because of their obedience to God of being planted, I get to also get the benefits of being planted in the house. So I don't know if you have your own house. What I mean is like, are you just attend? You're doing this like from here to here, to here. And I'm going to tell you that you're never going to grow, and eventually you're going to wither. And, and John 15 says this. I want you to go to John 15. Can you put John 15? It says, and they ask him, this is Jesus, who is the man who said to you, take up, that's, is that the one? No, John, did I say John 5? Five, five? No, 15, sorry. Okay, so I have to read it. So I'm just going to paraphrase it with John 15, go with me if you have your Bibles. John 15 talks about like that God is the vine, right? He says that he's the vine and we're the branches. He says that without him, we can do nothing. Without him, but you know, you need to know that without Jesus, you can do nothing. You need to, you need to know that Jesus comes with people. So if you don't have people around you, you're doing it alone, and you think you're doing it with Jesus. No, Jesus comes with people. Jesus comes with the message of reconciliation, and he left us that message. But I had a problem with this verse, and I'll show it to you. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I am in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you cannot do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch. And if Coming soon. And is wither. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. And I thought that's pretty hard to swallow, that verse. Because first you said that we are connected to you, but then you said that if we're not in you, then you're cast out. He didn't say, if you read, he says, I'm going to cast you out. He says, he or she is cast out. Because she or he decided to remove herself of himself from being rooted in him. And he says, it's cast out. Why? Because you're going to wither and you're going to die. You're going to wither in, in, in the way that you feel about Jesus. There is no nutrients. There is no word going. And then you, 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 you wonder, says, oh, my God, you're going to cast me out? No, you yourself are going to cast out yourself. You yourself are going to walk out of the blessing of God because you refuse to be with others. Because, look, it's messy. I don't like dirt. That's why I don't like planting. But I like flowers. Right? So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you tonight is that God wants you to make a choice. Make a decision. Decide today. And you have to say, you know, I, I want to bear fruit. And I want Jesus to be seen in my life. And I want to believe that. I want to believe, not only believe it, that, but I want to live it, the better. We're better together. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.